Hey guys, for this Master of That Gear video, I'm going to be looking at the Carvin V3M, which has been kindly loaned to me by one of my students, Andy. Now the Carvin 1-3M is a kind of a, a mini amp, I suppose. I've got the head version here, it comes in combo arrangements and things as well. Uh, but essentially it's a, a three-channel amp. It's powered by four preamp tubes and four uh, EL84 power tubes. Uh, it's quite a versatile amp. You can see there's quite a lot of uh, knobs in the front here. And in this front panel, we've really got our kind of uh, master volume uh, reverb setting here. And then we've got channel three, which has your typical EQ there, and a presence and a volume and a drive. And then uh, channel two and channel one also have exactly the same uh, control functions there. There's little switches here that I'll talk about when we go through the demo, the CQX stuff and various things. Uh, on the rear panel, we've got uh, speaker outputs um, we've also got uh, the socket for the foot pedal and the foot pedal allows you to basically switch between the, the three channels uh, as well as uh, activating the boost which I'll talk about as well plus switching the reverb on and off which is quite handy. Uh, on the rear we also have um, our switch Now this is a 50 watt amp but it's actually switchable from 50 watt to 22 watt to 7 watt Now that's quite handy because Really that allows you to, um, it doesn't really affect the volume as much when you're playing at home, but it just changes the headroom. So it'll break up a lot quicker if you're you know, driving the volume a little louder at the seven watt setting versus the, the 50 watt setting. So that's quite handy that it's scalable down to that. We also have an effects loop on the back. Uh, and plus, um, the I forgot to mention, the boost is actually got a variable level. So there's a volume pot on the back there that adjusts the amount of boost you want, which is quite handy as well. Some amps just have a fixed boost, but this one we actually uh, can control the level of that. Another feature that's on the back, um, which is quite cool, is we have uh, switches for LEDs in the amp. So not only do uh, we have a handy feature where each channel has its own separate LED color, color. so channel one is uh, blue, uh, channel two is red, uh, channel three is yellow, and the boost is the green LED, but we actually have switches at the back that allows to switch blue LEDs on or red LEDs. Now that's, um, some may say, well, that's kind of pointless, but I think that's a pretty cool little feature. So depending what mood you're in, if you want a little bit of a blue, kind of like Hughes and Kettner amps have that lovely kind of blue, blue LED thing going on, or if you want more of a kind of metal angle style, you can switch to the red LED, which is quite cool. So I think we'll, uh, Keep it in blue for just now. So for this demo I'm going to be using my Sir Custom, which is uh, essentially a mahogany body guitar by Maple Caps. It's a pretty classic combo, very Les Paul-like. Um, and what I'll do is first of all, I'll start off with this channel 3, which is effectively the clean channel. And what I've got here is, I've, as usual, I've set all the EQ for 12 o'clock, or 5 if you will. I've got the drive set to 5 as well, but it's, uh, I'll talk about how that kind of reacts in this. Now the master volume is about 3. And I have the volume and the channel at 2. Now I'm running the amp in 50 watt mode as well. So this is what it sounds like uh, on the bitch humbucker. So it's quite a nice kind of, uh, kind of clean, jangly kind of sound there. If I kind of tap that bridge. Nice, nice kind of bright kind of sound to it. Now, each channel in the amp has a little switch which uh, effectively kind of tweaks the gain structure in each channel. Now on this channel 3 we have a switch here that goes from bright uh, to the middle setting which is kind of classic to soak. Now as I said I was playing, um, you know, if I go back to my bitch humbucker, that's on the classic setting there. This is all the EQ is set at kind of 12 o'clock so it's quite a Nice, kind of clean there. A lot of nice highs in there. Now if I go to the bright settings, I'll flick that switch up. This kind of removes a little bit of that low end, but it has a little bit of fine enough, funnily enough, more of a kind of brighter sound. Go to the neck pickup.
Obviously I'm getting a more bass there because of the I'm on the neck pick up the amp there, but uh, on the guitar, sorry. It's a very, very nice clean sound. So the bright setting is quite good, I suppose, for more um, kind of country sounds. You know, that kind of, bit more of a kind of twang, I suppose. Uh, or, you know, more kind of funky settings, I suppose, as well. The soak setting here, um, if I play, uh, go to the bridge humbucker and I'll play uh, G chord again, just gonna compare it with what we did earlier. There's a lot more uh, kind of thickness to that sound there. A lot more bass in there. If I hit it a little bit harder, hopefully I'm not clipping there, but if I hit it a little bit harder, it begins to kind of, uh, break up a little bit. Uh, so let me just you know, tweak that volume down a little bit. So you get that kind of classic uh, kind of rock break up there. Okay, so we'll go back to the classic setting which is in the middle there. Put that volume back a bit too. So what does the actual drive do here? So I said I've got the drive at five, the drive down at one. Obviously I get a volume drop there, so it's controlling a bit of the, the overall kind of volume there. If I turn it up full, you can hear, let's turn the volume down a little bit. It's, it seems to kind of compress it a little bit more, so it gives you a little bit more of a, bit of a break up there and it's quite nice if I go to the net pick up here that'd be quite a nice kind of jazzy sound I suppose Kind of a little bit of dirt just at the edges, basically. So the the drive and the clean channel it really, in that classic setting, it adds a little bit more kind of warmth to things. If I go to the uh, the soak kind of setting and go back to the bridge uh, humbucker, I would expect it now to kind of break up a lot quicker. Yeah. So that is exactly what's going on now. Okay, so I'll just turn the volume down there to control it. Uh, now, if we go back to the classic setting and I'll put the drive midway again, volume at two. This EQ section, I've got it off, you know, mid uh, set five. It's a set of 12 o'clock there. But this EQX, what it does is it expands the EQ range. So, for example, let's, um, uh, I'll just kind of play a chord. This is with the bass up full on that clean channel. So you get more bass than you could ever want there. It's almost beginning to get a bit too, a bit too boomy. Uh, with the bass off, sounds like that. Yeah, a bit boxier there. Um, go back to midway again. The mids up full. You get this kind of sound. Mids off. And then we've got the treble here, so the treble up full. And then the treble off. Okay, so that's your standard kind of EQ range there, so it's pretty, quite uh, wide ranging there. But if I flick this EQX 
it expands the EQ can range. So first of all, if I just play an A string there, if I flick this EQX on, you can hear already, it's a much, much fuller kind of sound there. So now if I've turned the bass up full, really, really bassy. If I turn it off, Go in the mids, mids up full. Mids off. Treble up full. And then that treble off. So you've got a huge range of uh, tonal variants there. Even with the normal EQ setting, you've got quite a range there, your standard EQ kind of setting. So, you know, your bass, your treble, mid, you can tweak it to whatever your, your personal taste is. But this EQX expands even further. So what I found nice, if I'm in that classic setting there, and if, 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 you know, if I'm playing that, those kind of jazzy chords I was doing earlier, sounds all right, you know. If I turn up the, the drive a little bit, breaks up just a little bit more. But if I flick the EQX, I have even more of a kind of uh, lovely kind of jazzy sound there. So there's a huge range uh, of options available here. I mean, you could I spend a good bit of time kind of dialing in all these different sounds. I've been going to play with it for a wee while and I found a couple that are quite nice. But you could, um, you know, spend a good while kind of mucking about with that. Considering you've got the bright and the soak, you've got really um, enough tonal variation there to handle just about every kind of clean sound you'd want, basically. So let's have a listen to the gain channels in this amp. Now, channel one and two uh, are the gain channels and they're exactly the same. And what that means is you can actually dial in two different sounds into those channels there. So like your traditional setup, you could have a rhythm uh, kind of sound and then have a solo sound if you want. Or if you're doing, uh, you know, switching between kind of a classic rock kind of gain sound and then going into a kind of metal sound, you could do that there or hard rock or blues, you name it. So there's quite a scope of versatility there. So, you know, if you're in a covers band or something, that'd be really handy. Or if your music has that kind of uh, dynamic range to it, you could dial that in. Now, as usual, um, I've got all the EQs set to 12 o'clock here, so it's at 5 there. The presence is set to 5. I've got the volume set to 3 here, and the master volume still 2 over here. Uh, and I've got the drive set to 5 as well. Now, the EQX is the same that was on the clean channel, but, you know, I'll let you hear that in a second. But we have uh, our usual kind of drive structure switch here. And this is 3 settings. It has intense, classic, and then thick. Now, classic, I suppose, as the name entails, is meant to give you more of a kind of, uh, I wouldn't say martially, but I suppose it's trying to give you that more of a kind of classic kind of sound. It's not like rip your face off thrash type sound or uh, something with a big kind of thick bass. So let's have a listen to this classic setting and all the EQ and everything um, is set at 12 o'clock. So I've just got the bridge humbucker. <laughs> So even with the drive at five, there's quite a bit of uh, gain on there. Uh, it's not a, that kind of default setting, it's not a smooth kind of gain sound either. It's got quite a bite to it. Great for that kind of hard rock, kind of almost Soldano-like kind of thing. Okay, so let's have a listen to, keep the EQ and everything flat. Let's listen to the different kind of drive structure settings. So first of all, let's go to this intense setting. Okay. 
So there's a little bit more bottom end there and a little bit more kind of bite. I suppose the name implies intense, it's a bit more uh, uh, suited to kind of metal kind of sound, really a kind of aggressive. Okay, let's go all the way, let's try this thick setting. So that still has quite a big uh, kind of bottom end to it as well, I suppose that's why it's called the thick setting, but to me that sounds a little bit more... A bit more the, the kind of classic rock kind of sound, I suppose. Okay, so go back to the classic setting here. Let's have a listen to the, the kind of range of uh, this distortion here. So let's tame it right down. Let's go to two with the drive there, see what it sounds like. So now, I think when you tame that drive back, I think you get more of that kind of classic vibe. With this mahogany guitar, you get all those kind of classic tones, you know? So let's try the extreme end of the gain. So I'll turn the gain right up full. There's quite a lot of sustain there. Okay, so quite a lot of uh, length and sustain there, but it still has a nice clarity to it. It doesn't get too muddy. You know, once again, I've still just got all the EQ and everything set to kind of 12 o'clock here. So let's so bring that drive back down to halfway at five there. And let's have a listen to what the EQ settings are like. So remember, we've got this. We've got the drive setting on classic there. So with the bass up full, this is what it sounds like. Huge kind of bottom end there. Uh, with the bass off. Yeah, very boxy sounding, obviously. Uh, the middle up full. Mids off. Treble up full. Pretty harsh sound in there. With the treble off. Playing behind a duvet sound there, very nice. So, if I now flick the EQX, we'll have that expanded EQ range again. There. So this is a, an A power chord with the EQX off. EQX on. So this, to me, it almost sounds a little bit uh, louder and fuller there. Quite nice if you want a kind of smoother attack, I suppose, on um, a solo kind of setting or something. Um, 
So when the bass off an EQX, sorry, the bass up full EQX sounds like this. Bass off. That's not too bad, that's quite usable. Mids up full. That's a huge amount of mids there. Uh, mids off. Treble up full. Be able to cut people's heads off with that. Uh, treble off. Yeah, quick muffling again. So, just as before with the uh, channel three or the clean channel, you've got a huge range of uh, tonal options there with that EQX and EQ. Um, now, let's see if I can dial in just a couple of little sounds. So, let's see if I can get quite an aggressive kind of metal sound. So, get the uh, gain up a bit. Um, now, I'll go back to normal EQ setting. Flick up to the intense. Um, I'll just bring the mids down a little bit, maybe to three. Add a little more presence, so I've got a bit more attack to the note there. Uh, I think I might just tweak the treble just a little bit as well. The thing is, these chords were sustained for a good while. You, you, you get that sense from the distortion, there's a load of sustain there. Pretty, pretty good uh, metal kind of sound out there. So let's see if we can go the other way. So I'm going to go to the uh, thick setting now. Okay, and see if I can dial in something that's a little bit more uh, kind of classic sounding, I suppose. So a little bit more mids. Um, to the bass a little bit. Let me keep the presence. About seven now. Not bad. So let's go back to the classing setting, classic setting here. Um, bring the drive up again, but I'm going to go to more seven. But let's see if I can get a smoother uh, kind of lead sound. So um, I'm take the presence down a little bit. I'm going to bring the EQX on. A little bit more mids, a little bit of treble, just to give a little bit of an edge to it. Kind of centre. Let me let me tweak it a little bit more. That's quite nice. Let's try that in a neck pickup. Maybe a little 
little bit too woolly sounding, so I'll bring the presence up to bit four. It's a bit nicer. have a listen to the reverb sound of the amp. So I've got the reverb here set uh, to five. This is what it sounds like without reverb. And the reverb on. Reverb up full. Quite a deep reverb there. With quite a few little uh, reflections. So the Carbon VTM is quite a, a versatile wee amp. It's a lot packed into this kind of small package here. Um, the fact that you've got different colored LEDs for the channels is a nice touch. The fact that you can change the LED at the back you know, nice little touch, you know, nice. We've been playing with blue for all the demo, but you know, you can go to red now if you want. Um, you always get reverb on there, you get master volume. Each channel has its separate volume. We've got a boost on top of that. There's a huge range of uh, variables here to dial in uh, the sound that you want. And, you know, I've only been playing with it for a couple of hours now, but you would need to invest a good bit of time, I suppose, just to dial in uh, the sound that you want. But there's definitely scope there for some pretty rip your face off metal sounds to kind of classic kind of uh, more kind of rock sounds. Now I've also been running at 50 watt, um, but I haven't been obviously the master hasn't gone above two, so you know there's a plenty of volume on tap here for this amp. But it's, if I was to scale down to the 22 and the 7 watt, as I said, it wouldn't make much difference to the volume here. It would just change the headroom, so the clean channel here would probably break up a little bit earlier basically. But it was quite good if you you know. Uh, the fact that the master volume is fine because you can get nice bedroom uh, uh, volume levels out of it. But even uh, a gig, you have that switch at the back if you wanted to switch it down to seven watt, just because you crank up the power tube section just a little bit more. I would play a carbon amp. I have a carbon legacy, so I know uh, carbon amps are uh, pretty decent enough in quality. They're not maybe as a big uh, one of the big names in amp makers, but it's quite a lot of players do use them, and you do tend to get quite a lot of amp for your money. Uh, because of that and they've definitely managed to uh, pull off a great uh, wee amp in the V3M so if you can uh, give one a wee shot and see what you think for yourself.